we're going to start the chain rule. What the chain rule is, is if you have a function within a function, you have to be able to use the chain rule to take the derivative. So earlier today, and I forget who asked me this, they asked what happens if the function was like y is equal to the square root of 3x. And I said, at this point, you don't know how to do that. Because you have a function, 3x, inside the other function of the square root of x. So you have a function within a function. So in order to do something like that, you have to do the chain rule. So we're going to use the chain rule and the general power rule and uh, even eventually the quotient and the product rule all together to find the derivative. So if I have something like this, 3x minus 1 to the 4th, up until this point, you were you would have had to take 3x minus 1 times 3x minus 1 times 3x minus 1. You would have had to expand it and then take in the derivative term by term. The chain rule makes it more efficient. This also is a function within a function. as a square root. That's one function. And then inside of that, I have this other function. So you see how you have a function within a function. So if I say, like here, if I say u is equal to x squared plus 5x minus 7, that's the function within. And then I have, then technically, this f of x would be taking the square root of u. Does that make sense? And that's what I mean by u substitution. What's wrong? The b is greater than the scale. Period. I don't know why. And you might more respond to for how we need it. Okay, I'm not forgetting one. So here, my u would be 3x minus 1 because that's the function within. You with me? And then outside, so then y would be u to the 4. You good? That's not hard yet, right? So. When I use the chain rule, what I'm going to do is I am going to take, I, to find the derivative of this whole function, I take the derivative of what's inside and then multiply it by the derivative of outside. And I took it off. I take the derivative of outside and then multiply it by the derivative of inside. So going back to these guys, if I had u to the fourth and I asked you to take the derivative of that, you would tell me the derivative of u to the fourth would be what? 4u to the third, and then if I asked you what the derivative of 3x minus 1 was, you would tell me that was what? 3. I go over with what I did. And then to, to simplify, I have to put the u back. So I'm going to have 4 times the quantity of 3x minus 1 to the third, and I'm going to multiply by this 3. All I did was put the u back in, and I, uh, here's where I said what u was equal to. And then I do what I can. So here I can take 4 times 3 and get 12. So my final answer would be 12 times 3x minus 1 to the third. Good? So let's go to the other one. If I have something raised, this is u to the square root of u, which I'm going to write as u to the 1 half power. Does everyone agree? So now when I take the derivative of f of x, I'm going to take the derivative of u, which is what? Jackie? Okay, one half. So that's taking the derivative of the outermost function. Now I have to look inside and I have to ask myself, what is the derivative of u? So what is the derivative of x squared plus 5x minus 7? 2x plus 5. And now I'm going to clip. I'm going to, well, can I do it too? No, I won't. Uh, so I'm going to have 1 half. In place of that u, I'm going to write what u is equal to, which is x squared plus 5x minus 7. That's being raised to the negative 1 half power. And then 2x plus 5, I cannot have that negative exponent, so what is going to be in the denominator? Or the when I look at 1 half, what's in the numerator, what's in the denominator? The 1's in the numerator, the 2's in the denominator. When I have this x squared plus 5x minus 7, it's raised to negative 1 half power, so where should I put it? I, got, I can't distribute it, so where do I have? 
to the say in the numerator, go down to the denominator. So we go down to the denominator, so this will be x squared plus 5x, and now that power becomes a positive. And then where's the 2x plus 5 going to go since it's raised to the first power? So we go to the numerator. So I really don't need that one. I could erase that one if I wanted to. Good. So let's do some more, shall we? So here, I'm going to ask myself, what is the outermost function? Yeah? U to the fifth. U to the fifth. So this is y is going to be u to the fifth. And what is u equal to? 8 minus 7x. Now, Jack, when I take the derivative of u to the fifth, what's that going to be? 5u to the 4th, and then I'm going to take the derivative of u, so I'm going to look up here and take the derivative of this, which is going to be what? Negative 7. Everyone good? So now, can I multiply this 5 times negative 7, get negative 35? And then in place of that u, what am I going to write? 8 minus 7x, and that's going to be raised to what power? 4. And then you can't, don't expand 8 minus 7x to 4, that would be fun. Good? Our most function is what? Mackenzie? Cube root. So the outermost function is a cube root. So I'm going to say u cube root. So I'm going to write it like that. If I do that, Sophie, what is u equal to? 4x squared minus 9x minus 10. So I'm probably, before I take the derivative of this and that, what am I going to want to do with that? Are you going to take the derivative of that like that? No. How are you going to do it? What are you going to do first? So, u to what power? 1 over 3. <coughs> now, I'll take the derivative of that, Ryan. Okay, what? You know why? I feel like someone just helped you. Yeah, you're going to take 1 third and reduce the power by 1. Ooh, did, I, but now what do I have to do? As I took the derivative of the outermost function, Brent, what do I have to do now? Take the derivative of what? Of the u, and what is the derivative of u? 8x minus 9. Everyone agree? Jackie, do you want to clean up a little bit? goes in the numerator. Like I know I'm going to have a fraction, right? Because this is raised to a negative sign. You know what goes in the denominator? What's raised to a negative power? Oh. It says I'm off by one time, just do that. And what is your equal to? I'm raising that to two thirds. Good. Okay, let's see here. And if you have to write, like, if you have to do set, a couple steps to get there, that's fine. I think we can do one more. I think we can. Oh. Mm. Yeah, let's try it. 
How do I do this one? So can I do, can I write it like this? Can I write this as f of x? Come on, I can't write f of x. So come on, you have f of x. Can I write this as b of x? Everyone good? Can I write this as h of x? Yes? So if I'm doing the product rule, I'm going to leave g of x. I can't remember what order we do it in. Do we leave g of x alone first? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to leave g of x alone. Because the order doesn't matter for product, right? Because you're at and then I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of h of x. And then plus, I leave h of x alone and multiply it by the derivative of g of x. Yes? So, like, do we want to write a t over here or do we want to do it as we do it? What do you want to do? What do you feel? Like? Eric, what do you want to do? That, you know, <laughs> I'm asking you a multiple choice question. The correct answer is not yes. Making a key over to the side. Okay, so if I say g of x is equal to x to the third, what is the derivative of g of x? No, Mrs. Hurd. Huh? No, you can still talk. Hello? So the derivative, I, I think you said 3x squared. Okay. You definitely said that. All right, so here's h of x. h of x is equal to that 3x minus 1 squared, yes? So to find the derivative of this, I'm going to have to say u is equal to 3x minus 1. So h of x is equal to u squared. So the derivative of h of x would be... Go ahead, yeah. No, okay, come on, baby steps. 6x minus 2x. 2 times 3x, oh, 2 times u, whoopsie. You skip steps all over the place. I do step power by 1, and then multiply it by the derivative of u, the derivative of 3x minus 1 is 3. Hmm. h of x would be u squared. U is 3x minus 1. The derivative of something squared is 2u. And then the derivative of 3x minus 1 is 3. So this derivative is going to be 2 times 3, which is 6, times u, which is 3x minus 1. Now that I have this key, I'm going to substitute in, yes? We need to color code? We could color code. I, don't know. I can do all four. I'm going to do four colors. So g of x, g of x, derivative of h, derivative of h. We will eventually. h, just plain h, h, just plain h, just plain h is there. And then there's your pink, are you happy? No, no. Okay, all that. Yes? So here we go. Color coding. So I'm going to have x to the third times 6 times 3x minus 1 plus 3x minus 1 squared times the derivative, which is 3x squared. I'm going to take 6 times x to the third and make this 6x to the third. There's a reason why I'm not factoring it for that. Just your hand. Plus 3x squared times 3x minus 1 squared. Okay, ready? Let me know when everyone's this far because I'm going to show you how you have to simplify it now. We can't get rid of anything. We can factor lots of things out. So factor out, we have to factor out the lowest variable, yes? 
So between six and three, what can I factor out? I can factor out a three. Between x to the third and x squared, what can I factor out? x squared. Everyone good so far? Now between the quantity three x minus one, raised to the first, and the quantity three x minus one, raised to the second, what is, I can fact they both have that three x minus one, yes? What is the lowest power? One. So I'm technically factoring this out to the one. When I do that, I have two terms here, so I'm going to have two terms in here. What do I have to multiply 3 by to get 6? 2. What do I have to multiply x squared by to get x to the third? x. What do I have to multiply 3x minus 1 to the first power by to get 3x minus 1 to the first power? 1. Do I have to write that one? Yeah. And let's put a plus sign. What do I have to multiply 3 by to get 3? What do I have to multiply x squared by to get x squared? 1. And if I had nothing else, I would have to put that 1, but I have something. What do I have to multiply 3x minus 1 by to get 3x minus 1 squared? So this would be 3x minus 1. I really don't need that parenthesis, but I'm just showing you. Yes? So my final simplified answer. Oh! I'm going to have 3x squared times 3x minus 1, and then this will be 5x minus 1. And I can leave it like that. Good. 